The hot and hazy update for Grounded completely reworked the weapon system. Now we can upgrade our weapons up to level 7 and increase the damage and durability, but you probably already know this. What you might not have noticed is the base stats for every weapon that existed prior to this update also changed. This means they do less damage when first crafted and some even have less stun power. In this video I'm going to look at every weapon in Grounded and let you know what changed for each of them in the hot and hazy update. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so now so you never miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. To make this as easy as possible, what I did was I put this table together that has all the weapons in the game and their stats before and after the last update. On the left side, you're going to see all the weapons and any perks they have. Then we're going to see the before Hot and Hazy. This is going to be the stats the weapons had prior to the Hot and Hazy update. Next up, we have after Hot and Hazy. So you're going to see the damage done and speed when you craft the weapons. That's going to be the base, then levels 1 through 5. Then the last two columns are going to be Mighty and then Fresh, Salty, Spicy. So you can upgrade your weapons to level 6 and 7 using Mighty, Fresh, Salty, and Spicy choices. And then you'll notice there are some NAs in those columns as well. That means those weapons cannot be upgraded those paths, and I'll talk about that when I get to them. So first up, let's start with the Tier 3 melee weapons that are in the game. We have the Mint Mace, the Club of the Mother Demon, the Antlion Greatsword, and the Salt Morningstar. The first two, the Mint Mace and the Club of the Mother Demon, were the two best weapons in the game prior to the Hot and Hazy update. What you're going to notice is their damage was nerfed pretty hard down to the base stats. So the Mint Mace went from 8.5 down to 5.5, and the Club of the Mother Demon went down from 10 to 5.5. The reason they did that is because the maximum stat bar goes up to 10. So if they would have left the Club of the Mother Demon at 10, when you maxed it out at level 7, it would have been, I think, something like 17 damage. So what they've basically made it is you're going to need to get the weapons leveled up to get back to that base stat before. You're also going to notice their stun chances went from 7.5 to 6 each, respectively. And for the two weapons, the Mint Mace, you're going to have to get it to level 6 in order to reach or exceed the damage it was doing before. And for the Club of the Mother Demon, at maximum level of Mighty, it's going to do 9.9, .9, which I believe is probably going to show as 10 on the screen, so it's probably going to do about the same damage as it was before. So those are those changes. The next two are the Antlion Greatsword and the Salt Morningstar. Those were added in the Hot and Hazy update. You can see the stats there. They're two of the better weapons in the game right now as well. The Salt Morningstar has Salty by default, which means you can only upgrade it to Mighty. So when it gets to level 6 or 7, it'll be Mighty, but also have the Salty bonus on top of it. Next up, we have the Tier 2 melee weapons. This includes the Stinger Spear, the Ant Club, the Spider Fang Dagger, the Mosquito Needle, and the Black Ant Sword. The Stinger Spear has had its damage reduced by 50%, and even when fully leveled up, will not reach its previous damage amount. The Ant Club has had its damage and stun reduced. The damage has been reduced significantly. You're going to need to get to level 7 in order to reach its previous damage capability. The Spider Fang Dagger has also had its damage reduced, and even when maxed out, is not going to reach its previous damage. And the Mosquito Needle has also had its damage reduced, and you're going to have to get it to level 7 to reach its previous damage capability. And of course, the Black Ant Sword is new in the Hot and Hazy update, but you can see its stats there. It's a pretty decent sword. Now we have the Tier 1 melee weapons. These include the Peblet Spear, the Spiky Sprig, and the Larva Blade. These were all previously in the game before the Hot and Hazy update. The Peblet Spear has had its damage reduced by about 50% base, but you will notice that you will be able to reach that previous level once you get to level 5. The Spiky Sprig has had its damage and stun reduced pretty heavily for the damage specifically, and you'll have to reach level 7 in order to get back to its previous damage amount. This makes sense in my opinion because the Spiky Sprig was probably a little bit too overpowered, especially early game before this update. Once you got it, you pretty much could destroy anything you ran into early on. And then last but not least is the Larva Blade. The Larva Blade has had its damage reduced, but you can also get it back to where it was before at level 5, so it's a pretty decent starter weapon. Now let's take a look at the busting weapons. These are the Insect Hammer and the Peblet Hammer. You're going to notice they both had their damage and stun reduced in this update. The Insect Hammer, you're going to need to get all the way to level 7 Mighty before it's going to reach its previous damage capability. And the Peblet Hammer, you're going to have to also get to level 7 either in the Mighty, Fresh, Salty, or Spicy upgrade path in order to reach its previous damage capability. And of course, the stun was reduced slightly for the Insect Hammer and a little bit more for the Peblet Hammer. So you're going to be getting a little bit less stuns, especially with that Peblet Hammer. Next up, we have the chopping section, which is going to be the Insect Axe and the Peblet Axe. The Insect Axe was nerfed pretty heavily. You're going to see its damage is reduced by 50%, and even when maxed out, it's not going to reach its previous damage capability. It's also had its stun reduced slightly. The Peblet Axe has had its stun and damage reduced as well, but once you get to level 5, you're going to have that back to where it was before. This also makes sense because it's one of the first weapons you're going to get in the game, so they probably want you to get back up the where you need it to be pretty quickly in order to make it a viable weapon. 
Next up, we have the ranged weapons. This is the insect bow, the crow crossbow, and the sprig bow. Of course, all three of these were in the game before the hot and hazy update. What you're going to notice is all three have had their base damage reduced, and the crow crossbow has had its stun capability or stun power reduced. You're also going to notice they can only be upgraded through the mighty path. In order to get fresh, salty, or spicy damage with a bow, you're going to have to craft either a mint, salt, or spicy arrow and use those. Now, before this update, my opinion was the insect bow was better in pretty much every case. But they've made it now, so in order to get back to that previous level of damage, you're going to have to get it to level 6. Whereas for the other two bows, you're only have to get them to level 4. So this is probably going to make it, especially in the mid where you're looking at level 4 and 5, where the crow crossbow probably outperforms a little bit. And then towards the end, maybe the insect bow gets back to where it was before. But overall, they're probably going to be pretty close in damage, because even though you see that speed where it's 3.5 versus 5, that is not actually a 7 times speed shooting capability it's actually only about i think it was about 1.7 1.8 times faster so it's really not that big of a difference and you're going to notice that the damages so dps wise they're probably going to be much closer than they were before this update although i still think overall the insect bow might be a little bit better when you get it up to level seven last but not least we have the underwater weapons so these are the bone dagger the bone trident and the pebble dagger all three of these were of course in the game before the hot and hazy update you're going to notice all three have had their base damage reduced and the Pwn Trident has had its stun reduced. Of the three, only the Bone Dagger is going to be able to reach its previous damage capability, and in order to do so, you have to get it to level 7. The others have had their damage reduced. Kind of interested to see why the Peblet Dagger was not made a little bit stronger. I know you get it a little bit later on when you're just starting out, but the other starting weapons all seem to have been buffed a little bit. Although most likely with the Tier 1 weapons, you're probably not going to upgrade them beyond the first couple levels because it does get costly, and you'll probably have found the higher tier weapons before you end up getting enough quartzite to level up those earlier weapons past level like three, four, or five. So here's the chart that shows everything I just talked about. Now you're gonna notice there's a couple things that are not on this chart. That includes the digging tool, so the shovels, the repair tool, as well as the arrows and explosives. The reason they're not on here is I don't believe most people are gonna be using the shovels for damage or the repair tool. So I didn't include those. I don't think it's worth the time. The explosives do not have in-game stats, so I can't see exactly how much stat, how much damage they do. So I don't know if they were tweaked at all. I don't think they were. I think they're the same as they were before. And then the arrows, again, they don't have stats in-game. Of course, the feather arrow, I think, does more damage than the others. But like I said, without knowing the exact stats, I can't see them. I'm hoping that at some point in the future, they do make all those stats available because being able to know how much each arrow does, how much the explosives do will give us just a better idea so we know what's best to use against each of the different types of insects because, of course, each one of them do have specific weaknesses and strengths now, which I'll be covering in a future video once I get all my data put together. I was doing lots of testing on different weapons, different upgrade paths on insects, and I found a lot of discrepancies from what I saw other people reporting, and I just want to make sure I have it as right as possible in order to be able to give you the best information. Again, with that information, I really hope that they do end up putting that information in the game. It will be nice if like maybe after you either kill a certain number of insects, of a type of insect, let's say you kill like 10 ladybugs, or maybe after you just analyze all their different parts, that the game will tell you how to, what they're strong and what they're weak against. Because having us just guess or doing through trial and error is just not like the best way to do it. So that's what's changed with every weapon in Grounded. If you found this video helpful, make sure to click the like button as it really helps my channel. If you want to support the channel even more, you can become a member by clicking join below or via the link in the description. You'll not only be making videos like this possible, you'll also unlock exclusive loyalty badges and emotes that you can use during my live streams. In any case, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.